All right, so my name is Tom Isaacs, and this is Jessica Holder. Our uh, country that we decided to research was Chile. Um, just to begin, uh, a few of the culture shocks that we were looking at specifically were language, transportation, and uh, the cuisine, chili, food and drink. Um, these were, is what we chose just because we figured this would be the most important information for the uh, employees over at the uh, Sarah Downey company. So, just to get started, the official language for Chile is Spanish, but it's not like the Spanish that you uh, learned in high school or anything like that. It's um, kind of a native type, with, uh, different um, types of length, different types of words. Um, some smaller areas of Chile have been known to speak like different types than others, but um, mostly it's the same. Uh, they're known to appreciate the travelers and foreigners um, and let them take time to learn their language, you know, help them with anything if they're lost with like driving, anything like that. Um, it's better to become more fluent there just because it would be easier to get around, um, easier to get employed, easier to do business. Um, it's kind of essential just because there's nobody that really speaks English in Chile. Um, so moving on to uh, transportation. So Chile's transport is, I mean, is obviously not like America, but um, compared to other third world countries and compared to other countries in South America, it's more advanced, um, especially in the southern part of the country. Um, most of the, the common transportation is taxis and buses, um, things of that nature. Um, more common vehicles are, you probably won't see many Toyota Camrys there. Probably won't see many Lexus and the more the luxury brands, but more base models and foreign companies. Um, like I said earlier, um, it's really important with transportation to learn the language just because it's really difficult to get around if you don't know Spanish. Um, it could be dangerous. You could get lost, not be able to read the road signs, um, etc. Alright, moving on to the food and drinks. Uh, Chile is known for their world class vineyards and they have a large like variety of wines and they have a bunch of different types of food that I don't know how to pronounce but uh, one of them has chicken, beef, corn, rice, and potatoes and it's a stew that is all mixed together and uh, for this aspect, I would say the food and drinks can cause a culture shock, especially if you're like a picky eater or like if you don't like to waste a lot of food or anything like that. So to be able to de decrease your feeling of culture shock for the language, I would say just learning the entire, pretty much becoming fluent for it, so would help you with the transportation and food too being able to understand and know where you're going and stuff. Um, so for the food and drinks, it's just being able to not be such a picky eater. So that would be the only thing. So just to end the discussion, are there any questions from the audience? What is your favorite part of this research? So the question was, what was your favorite part, um, or what was the most inter interesting part of your research? Um, just for me, I would say uh, I have family members who have done mission work over in Chile, and they are actually currently living there. So it's interesting to see what kind of culture they're living in every day. Um, you know how he's. I know he's fluent in Spanish there, and even in some of the native languages. So it's cool to see some of the challenges he had to face uh, when going over there. Are there any questions? for me. Um, I would say my favorite part for it would be just learning another culture and understanding how all of it goes and uh, I would like to experience that one day honestly. Yeah. All right thank you for your time.